What's up YouTube, this is Dirk coming at you on another hot Alabama afternoon. This will be a Cub Cadet LT1042 video. I am going to be replacing my spindle and my spacer. The uh, spindle goes through the deck and of course your blade attaches here to the spindle and your spacer and the nut. So I have cracked a few spacers and finally figured out what I was doing. And uh, there's a couple of other things, uh, so let's get to it. In general, before I start any kind of work, you'll notice on the mower that uh, you always have grass on the deck and uh, just kind of around. You don't have to do this, but I make it a point because I'm gonna actually be picking up the whole mower to get access to the bottom once the deck is off. And you'll notice a whole bunch of grass will drop everywhere. Uh, seems to really mess with my allergies. So I'm gonna take a quick shot back to it. I'm not going to do another oil change here. I'm just going to kind of quickly go through what I've done in the past, but it's still a little warm. We were using it here, so I'm trying to stall before I pick it up and get really into the engine. You have a pre pre cleaner that you need to soak in oil, and the air filter here. Okay, and I recommend cleaning out all of these bays and compartments. You can see this has only been running for a few hours, so it looks new as it should be. It's a little little tricky to get it. There's these grooves here all the way around it that have to slip basically over this housing. So it takes just a second. Uh, sweat's dripping in the eye. It takes just a second to get it on there, but you'll feel it go in there and know that you have it. And you just have to, this whole thing comes out. Again, soak it in new clean oil when you change it out, wring it out, put it back in there. But you can already see the difference in, in this, what this pre-cleaner is supposed to do. Okay, the kit that I bought for my new fuel filter um, and oil filter, air filter, came with uh, just this, this flexible hose. I initially thought I was supposed to replace, for, because it was so long, I thought I was supposed to replace it from here all the way back underneath to the gas tank, but I was just kind of being, being a little bit uh, uninformed. What, what I ended up doing is replacing the hose between my fuel filter and the fuel pump right here. And it came with new, uh, new um, little clamps here, just pressure clamps. Okay. Of course, uh, about the only tool I'd recommend at first is the uh, pipe or the uh, oil filter wrench. Of course, to get around the oil filter to take it off. And when you're filling up the oil filter, make sure you pour oil into the oil filter all the way up to the top so that you can you get an accurate reading of the uh, capacity. And the owner's manual will tell you how much to put it in, including the oil filter. This right here is the port. I'm not going to do it, of course, but you just have to twist it and pull out, uncap it, and all the oil comes out. As I, uh, if you've seen my pressure washing oil change video, I use these expandable funnels. So I just take an old milk jug and then I can recycle that oil at advance. That's where I take mine. Um, but of course, just drain it out and it works, works really, really well to get that out there. Once you cap it back in, you add oil, of course, in the dipstick uh, or in the uh, hole where the dipstick is. Okay. And uh, the spark plug is a little bit more of a challenge. A couple bolts here. Next year, I'll do a video when I'm actually doing it, but take this housing off undo the uh, spark plug and put a new one in. If you've ever done any kind of small engine repair, spark plug's pretty easy, so I won't go into that here. What I will tell you is that right when I finished my oil change, of course I put in a new fuel filter, oil filter, both air filters, drain the oil, put the new oil in. And then I uh, took off the battery and charged it just with a low voltage charging system, charged the battery back up, went to turn it on and it went pop and I smelled some burning plastic and I noticed that that little 20 amp fuse right there, let me steady the camera, the 20 amp fuse 
had, had blown and that powers the whole mower. So on a Cub Cadet, right, I just took that out and uh, put a new one in and it worked just fine. Before you do any kind of work on the deck, if you're gonna have to be moving your mower up and down, I would highly recommend you drain all of the oil, then tilt it up and do all your work. And then as it comes back down, um, you can obviously put the new oil in. Just a quick PSA here. I bought this lawnmower on the side of the road from a guy here in uh, Alabama several years ago, and it obviously did not come with the operator's manual. So I Googled it, it's not very big. Um, just a uh, general piece of advice, anytime you buy a piece of equipment, uh, just go online and print off the operator's manual. Mine obviously, as you can see, I've circled LT1042. Uh, besides doing this, the best advice I can give you is to go online and search for, in this case, for example, the Cub Cadet LT1042 exploded parts diagram. Overall, in your, um, in your actual parts manual, you'll have listed the, for example, the drive belt, deck belt, and different things that you need for your model. So this is a good place to be able to go, and then all I do is jump on Google and Amazon and look for these and try to find the best uh, quality part for the price. It's very difficult to move the deck far enough to be able to slide this rod out of that groove before you, sorry, let me get my camera adjusted, before you take out these pins, okay? So, do my best to light it up here for you. These are on a spring. You wanna make sure your deck is lowered all the way, obviously, when you're doing this. I recall I have to there we go make sure you've got the yeah you have to spin it and then it just comes right out if you saw that so here right there with my fingernails on and on the other side you see those little nibs okay those have to align right there let's go over and repeat the process on the other side okay So that's it, it's free, and obviously that can go up. And kind of just have to finagle the deck to a certain angle right there, then it pops out. Now from this point, you can twist it. Make sure you can see how right here it's flattened. So when you go to put it in this slotted groove, okay. There's only one way that it can go in. In other words, as you can see, it doesn't go up, it doesn't go in. It has to go in on that spot right there that's that's more flat, okay? So let's pull the deck out. Okay, at this point, you just need to be careful uh, because your belt is still on. And, okay, it's right there so now i'm going to show you how to get that off okay so we are heavily underneath the mower and i wanted to try to show you uh, let me get my hand out of the way this uh, rod here that i'm holding actually serves two purposes one it prevents the deck belt here from sliding off as you can see right there where my middle finger is it goes inside of the groove of the pto um I don't know what this is called, a clutch or something. Basically, this this spins. You can see I'm moving it back and forth. If this were not inside that channel, this would freely spin, and your mower is broken when you go to uh, when you go to use it. So you have to unbolt it right oh, right there. Okay. And once that's off, it just is a little pressure fitting on the other side uh right there okay it just pulls it goes and pulls right out of that spot right there this is the bolt that we need to take off but as i follow this up try to get the view there it is with the finger i just pull it i'm pulling it you know towards the bottom of the screen there and there it goes so with the deck off and that guard off the deck belt just slides right off. Okay, now your deck is free and you can just slide it.
send it out. Okay. All right. If this is if this is the first time you've done this, I suggest taking a picture of your your layout. There is a sticker right here that shows us and simulates it. Of course, <clears throat> what we just unattached the deck belt from pulls it up like this. So as it's moving, it's not hitting this piece right here. Okay, so that's why when there's tension on the belt, it, it's fine. So two things. This is the spindle. This is a spindle. Okay. I'm going to be replacing this one. And this is a new one. And this uh, pulley right here, I was noticing all... I'll grab the camera in here in just a second, but the pulley was starting to make a groove in my actual metal of the deck. And I was wondering what was going on. Well, it turns out the pulley itself was flipped upside down. Sometimes you buy something from somebody, they might have done some uh, maintenance on it and just put it in wrong. So don't ever assume that it's on there correctly. Just to uh, fix it. If it's not spinning freely, it's broken. Okay. So if you're looking right underneath here, you'll see the spindle is there. Now you see it. Now you don't. There's only a half of it because it broke as opposed to this piece, which it's also broken, but not quite as much. The spacers underneath before, again, when I bought this more, these blades were actually flipped. And so these, I'll get my spacer here. The spacer sits on like this. These two raised or protruded pieces of the blade, when I was tightening it against the spacer, it was basically putting outward pressure on the edge of the spacers and just crack, crack. So I went, I broke two of them right away and thought, what the heck's going on? I thought these were just cheap spacers until I realized. Again, difference between that piece smashing the spacer you can see the gap in between there versus sitting flush so that's why if you want to keep cracking spacers put your blade on upside down so it goes that way and case in point there you go that's a before and an after this is just going to hold it while i come over here buddy okay luckily that's all I needed, but when you're tightening it, it's going to be the opposite. Okay, so blade in the correct way again, and a second cracked spacer. So what I'm going to do now, since this was my good spindle, my new one, I'm just going to replace the spacer and then put the bolt back on. Whoops, blade would help. And again, this flat portion, when I tighten it to 70 PS, uh, foot pounds. All right. Watch it. it went. Okay. Okay. So this is a 13 millimeter bolt. And um, unfortunately, first thing we're going to do, let's keep our good spindle over here so we don't damage it. And again, if you are, if you are, get up top here. You're gonna to have to take this housing off. Unfortunately, you can't lift this spindle out with this housing on. So I think these are 13 as well. It's a little loud, sorry. Just hold these. And okay, that comes off. Just, uh, you know, loosely keep your belt off because you're gonna be putting that right back.
spacer. <laughs> I'm going to use the bolt. If you want to keep the nut, excuse me, I'm going to use the new nut. I want to keep this just as a spare. Probably not a bad idea. Flush side down, right on top. Put the nut back on. Torque it down to 70 foot pounds. Oh, good grief. Got it. Okay. So now we just got to put, put the belt back on. And of course, that's you can't do that once this is on, also. So I'm going to keep it. Whew. Sorry. That is loud. Okay. Do a quick test. That tensioned up. You have good movement there. And as you can see, what I was referencing was down. I'll take it. It's down. Uh, very difficult to access that grease fitting right here once it's behind. With this housing on, there's no way it'll go. So both of these, the grease fitting there and there, this comes pre-greased, but I'll hit it with my own grease gun here in a second. Uh, now you can actually access it. So lift with your legs, not your back, right? And if your mower is hot, you're going to scald your hands right now on this. The, this bar here protects the muffler, so I grab onto this bar here. You know, it's uh, it doesn't. There's just a cotter pin that holds this, so you're not going to rip anything off. Okay. 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 Cooper, kick that in there. All right. I'm coming around here. Hand me my light, please. Okay. You can just stand there. So. Um, this, uh, I can't really have let it down, so just forgive me and bear with me here as we, as we make do. Your steering linkages right here and right here, you'll want to undo those two bolts because you have to actually, uh, in order to change this belt right here, that's your transmission belt. There's a fan right there that cools off that hydrostatic transmission um, right here, okay? This was a pain in the butt because this here, as you can see, that's that channel right there, okay, and the, whoop, you're fine, Cooper, hold up. Okay, what I couldn't show you before, okay, this has, do it against that yellow background, you can see that end sticks inside, there's multiple holes here in the mower, okay, but I, I have mine marked where it goes, and then of course, this hooked in, right? That's what is going to go through through the channel. So you're basically doing that. Okay, this attaches right there. It bolts bolts to the uh, frame here, and then this sticks through into this hole. And with it like this, okay. Obviously, this is a pretty crappy explanation. We'll show and tell, but this PTO drive cannot move because that is locked in place. Okay, now I took this bolt off with my air ratchet, got it off, and this is supposed to completely come out. Remember, this is a 2007 and before model. So this was completely rusted, like rust welded shut. Okay, I used every spray lubricant and dissolver that I could afford. I banged on this without breaking it, and I eventually just said, forget it. I had to undo one, two, three, and underneath, once you take the steering linkage off, and the steering wheel turns, four, right? So it took off four bolts. Those four bolts are what the engine is mounted to on this plate. With that, and by, I had this on the ground jacked up. I was underneath it. This was several nights, you know, into, into midnight out here where I was just getting pretty ticked off because I couldn't get this PTO uh, pulley off. So eventually when I unbolted the engine mounts, I was able to push the engine up enough. Cooper, come in here and see if you can't get uh, that black belt right in there. Touch the screen and it focuses on the belt. There you go. So I'm focused right there on the finger, yeah. So that is the transmission belt. And without, you cannot get it on with this piece of metal. So you have to push this up. If this, okay, back up now. If this pulley comes off, 
not a big deal. You just put it right on. <laughs> but if you're like mine and it's just welded on there, um, you're going to have to push it up in that extra. It's only about this much extra space that you'll get, but it was just enough to get the, the belt started. And then as I rolled it like this, it just, you know, how you start to put a belt on and roll it and it feeds it into the track. Um, actually, and of course, take a picture when you're like this, your model might vary, but how the belt wraps around, it goes underneath and up onto that and then down. So pretty critical that you understand where it is. But again, this transmission belt was absolutely shot. I'm shocked that it was still on. So if you're going to go through the trouble of replacing your deck belt, um, please look at your transmission belt as well, because mower is not going to work without that. Everything else, you know, I, I uh, took the opportunity to hit up all my, my grease fittings here in the tires, uh, making sure my steering linkages were tight. So that's okay. That amount of play is okay. I had it tightened down just the way I needed it. So we're going to go ahead and drop this back down. I wish I could put this back on, but I can't with the deck off. So some things are easier when it's up. Um, but unfortunately, that doesn't work. All right, step back, buddy. Same thing, as you can see, just grabbing it right here and don't hurt yourself. Okay, give it one last look and of course, these, uh, these spring pins, everything once it's underneath is so hard to get to. So if you can just get it right there, ready to push in, ready to push in once we drop those two arms down into these little slots right here, just makes it easy. This one we will have to turn, if you recall. This one just goes in. That's by design. conveyed how how easy that was this is only the how fourth or fifth time I've had to take the deck off once you get everything off make sure you've taken a good picture I think that's the biggest lesson learned take too many pictures to understand which which hole the rod is supposed to go through or the bolt supposed to go through and then apply some common sense um, like with my blades just because something is the way it is when you get it it doesn't mean that that's how it's supposed to be. I was able to flip my blades 180 and stop breaking my spacers. Taking this to the shop and doing uh, all the blades, spindles, spacers, deck belt, transmission belt, oil change, uh, spark plug, all, all that stuff. Uh, I've priced it out here. I'm not gonna name names, but it would have cost me well over $1,000 in parts and labor. So when you're a DIY guy, sometimes you have to figure that stuff out, but hopefully I showed you enough to be able to replace everything. And uh, next year, you'll have to just tune back in when I do the actual oil change. 
So, peace out.